Good morning, Duck Church. I hope everybody's feeling good this uh, happy Mother's Day. Do we have any uh, visitors in town? Yeah, we got a few. Yeah. The season. All right, well, let's go ahead and if you would stand up with us and let's, uh, let's praise.
storm and I will sing I will sing your name forevermore cause you came down and you poured out your love you take out our sins for us forever we are thankful for you the Lord is my rock the Lord is my strength I will trust you all my days. The Lord is my life. The Lord is my love. And I praise the God of heaven above. You rescue me from all. Gracious God, we thank you for adopting us into your family through the miracle of your grace and calling us to be brothers and sisters to each other. Today, loving God, we pray for our mothers. We pray for those who cared for us when we were helpless, who comforted us when we were hurt, whose love and care we often took for granted. Today, we also pray for those who are grieving the loss of their mother, mothers grieving the loss of their child, those who never knew their biological mother and now yearn for her, those who have experienced the wonder of an adopted mother's love, the families separated by war or conflict. Lord, give them special blessings. Keep us united with you and to each other so that we can all become what we are meant to be. In Christ's name, amen.
constant in the trial and the change. This one thing remains. This one thing. Thank you. So turn to your neighbors and greet each other. Say hello. Happy Mother's Day. Nancy Robinson is a missionary that our church supports in Sierra Leone, and she's going to be sharing the children's message this morning. So come on up, kids. Thank you. Y'all going to sit down? Okay, 
so I'm Reverend Nancy, and I don't know all of you, but I'm happy to be in your church this morning on a special day. And I brought something with me from my kitchen in Sierra Leone. Do you know what this is? I think it is. Go ahead and say. It looks like a bowl, doesn't it? And that's exactly what I would have used it for. But what, would you, what else could you use this for? I have a little one and a big one. Want to feel it? Pass it around so you can feel how heavy it is. Is it really heavy? No, it's not heavy at all. What would you do with that if you had that? What could you put in there? Well, this is a, it's called a calabash, and it grows on a tree in a big round, like a big round ball growing on a tree. And when it gets to the size that you want your bowl to be, you pick it. Clean out the insides like a gourd, and um, you let it dry in the sun, and grab this little one, and then you can use it. And you can use it for water, you can use it for rice, you can use it for whatever you want. They come in all sizes, so you just figure out what size you need. And so that's a cooking utensil in an African kitchen that I, it was actually used in my kitchen. Moms have all kinds of dishes in their kitchens, don't they, that they use for cooking. So now, I want you to think about, could your life be like this calabash? How could your life be like this bowl? Could you be like a bowl? Could you hold something inside you? Yes, you can. We just sang a song about how God, Jesus, pours out love and fills us up, right? So you think about that bowl being full of love. Now here's my next question. When that love comes out of the bowl, it helps people. What are you good at doing? What are you good at doing? What are you good at doing? Running? Very good. You're a runner. What are you good at doing? What? Artist. We have an artist who likes art. Anything else? A builder. Perfect. Anything else? Anybody good at math? Anybody? You're good at math. Yeah, if you're a builder, you would have to be good at math to be a civil engineer. What else? Technology is a perfect gift. <laughs> That's perfect. So what you can do is when that love comes out of your life, when something comes out of that bowl that you've cooked, tastes good, when love comes out of your life, it comes out through the things you're good at doing. And that's how you can be one of God's helpers, by letting his love come out of you through the things you're good at doing. That's what missionaries do. So if you're good with technology or at building or at drawing or teaching or all the different things, maybe you're a good musician like we heard just a few minutes ago, all those things that we're really good at, that's how God's love comes out of our lives and touches other people's lives and makes them feel really great. Isn't that cool? And that's what being a missionary is about. It's just letting God use you to do good things with whatever you're good at. Isn't that cool? So that's what being a missionary is. So your life is like a calabash. It's full of God's love, and it's making something good with what you're good at. That's what I want you to remember. Let's thank God for that. Can you say a prayer? Let's pray. Lord, thank you for the sweetness of your love. Thank you for making each one of us special. We thank you for our moms and dads and everybody whose love pours out and is helpful and makes this world a good place to be. Bless these children in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, I have a piece of something sweet in Sierra Leone. We give children candy at the end of the service, and we tell them it's the sweetness of God's love touching their lives. And it's a blessing. You can go back to your moms and dads. You want one? Here you go.
Everybody get one? You change your mind. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Amy Denson. I'm the youth and young adult pastor here. Our pastor, John, is on sabbatical for 10 weeks. We're on, I think, week number four now. Um, He has made his way to Disney World with his family. This week, he is at graduations for himself and for his son, John Jr. Uh, Go Tar Heels. Um, Yeah, got to get that in while I can, while he's not here. Um, This morning, if you don't mind, on the inside of your pews, there's a little blue book there. If you don't mind um, writing your name in there uh, and give us some information about you if you'd like to, we would love to know where you're from, um, what brought you to Duck Church, all that kind of stuff. Um, This week, we have um, Kip Robinson is going to be sharing our message for us. I'll tell you a little bit more about him uh, later, but next week, if you're in town and you're able to be back here next week, uh, Laura Early, who is the pastor of All God's Children United Methodist Church um, in Allander, is going to be sharing the sermon. Our church has had a connection with All God's Children United Methodist Church for a very long time and supported their uh, ministries there. Our youth are connected with their youth. Allander is one of the poorest communities in our state. Uh, So we have some good connections with them. We can serve them, but they also come and serve us. And so part of them serving us is uh, Pastor Laura coming here to share a word with us next week. Um, We have a mission moment this morning. It is from the community of Rhoda Funk, which Kip and his wife Nancy serve in. So take a listen to see a little bit about uh, the ministry going on there. Sierra Leone, a small West African country with a tropical climate and peaceful people as diverse as its environment. Almost six million people live in Sierra Leone, a country about the size of the state of South Carolina. It is a place where poverty is overwhelming and health conditions are worsening. From a health perspective, it ranks among the very worst in the world, including the rest of Africa. 9% of all newborn babies died during childbirth, while 18% of all children died before they reached the age of five. For those who survive, lack of adequate health care and clean water exacerbate disease outbreaks. Overall life expectancy is 57 years. Over two decades ago, the country went through a devastating war between the government and rebel troops who were aligned with neighboring countries seeking, among other things, control of the diamond mines. This was not a tribal war, nor a religious war, nor even a political war, but a war of greed, one that put neighbor against a neighbor. Prior to the war, the village of Rotofunk was home to one of the most vibrant, advanced hospitals in the whole country and the only medical facility for an area with over 145,000 people. At the end of the war, the Rotofunk Hospital had been massively destroyed, leaving the area residents without medical services of any kind. In the mid-1990s, the Norwegian Methodist Church funded a medical mission that provided intermittent basic medical services to the people in and around Rotofunk. The basic buildings of the hospital that were decimated by the Civil War were reconstructed, yet remained uninhabited and inoperable. In the meantime, John Yambasu, a missionary from Sierra Leone who had worked with Reverend Edith Leaves from United Methodist Global Ministries, became bishop of that war-torn country. The bishop and his team thoughtfully designed and began implementing a 10-year plan of revitalization for his country. In 2013, in the Methodist way, Bishop Yambasu invited Edie Gleaves, now the associate pastor of Wrightsville United Methodist Church, to be the opening preacher at Sierra Leone's annual conference. Pastor Edie invited a small team to travel with her to explore future mission opportunities in Sierra Leone. This set the stage for much correspondence with the Sierra Leone annual conference and communication between Bishop Hope Morgan Ward Bishop Yambasu, and the leadership of Wrightsville United Methodist Church. 
an advanced mission team of seven individuals from North Carolina, including conference leadership and medical personnel from the Harbor District, was formed and, within months, traveled to Sierra Leone. Through the grace of God, this mission team made the 60-mile, nearly four-hour trip from the capital of Freetown to the hospital and village of Rotofunk. Travel took so long because of the ruts, potholes, blind curves, and a river crossing on a crude jury-rigged ferry. Once there, the team completed a full assessment of the current conditions and future needs of health services in the Rotofunk community and developed both long and short-term plans for reopening the Rotofunk Hospital and keeping it functional well into the future. Consulting with Kip Robinson, a Methodist missionary, the team developed a plan and prioritized the list of projects to be completed. missions that our church supports here at Duck United Methodist Church. And so when you give your gifts to Duck Church this morning, remember that you're a part of something, not just in this community, but all over the, the world. So let's uh, honor God with our tithes and offerings. sword and fight for love little did I know that love was one for me here in my arms you're still my heart again and I breathe you in like I'd never breathed till now my faith gets tired and my hope seems long
Would you stand, please, for the reading of the gospel? Um, you'll see the scripture on the screens here is taken from the com common English version of the Bible. As the Father loved me, I too have loved you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I've said these things to you so that my joy will be in you and your joy will be complete. This is my commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you. No one has greater love than to give up one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I don't call you servants any longer because servants don't know what their master is doing. Instead, I call you friends because everything I heard from my father I have made known to you. You didn't choose me, but I chose you. And appointed you so that you could go and produce fruit, and so that your fruit could last. As a result, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. I give you these commandments so that you can love each other. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. So this morning, uh, Kip Robinson is going to share with us. Kip um, is an engineer by trade. He got involved in the ministry in Sierra Leone um, with designing a school, correct, Kip? Yep, so he was designing a school there that ended up being a model for other schools that were built in Sierra Leone, and then he got involved in the project at the hospital in Rotafunk, and he was in Sierra Leone during the Ebola crisis, as y'all probably remember from a few years back. So let's give a warm Duck Church welcome to Kip Robinson. One through uh, verses one through six, and this is the common English Bible. It's not the one that's in your church pew. So hear the word of God. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born from God. Whoever loves someone who is a parent loves the child born to the parent. This is how we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep God's commandments. This is the love of God. We keep God's commandments. God's commandments are not difficult because everyone who is born from God defeats the world. And this is the victory that has defeated the world, our faith. Who defeats the world? Isn't it the one who believes that Jesus is God's son? This is the word of God for the people of God. Would you join me in prayer? Papa God, may the words of my mouth and the thoughts of all those here at Duck UMC be acceptable in your sight this day. Amen. Well, good morning. Um, I want to let any visitors with us today know that I'm not part of the first string clergy here at Duck UMC. In fact, I'm not even clergy. So if you're uh, visiting, Look forward to a few weeks of uh, different messages and different messengers and um, until uh, Pastor John returns from a well-earned sabbatical. I have to tell you that Duck is the only suburb of Richmond that I've never been to. Um, I've been to all the other major suburbs of Richmond like the West End and Henrico and Verona and uh, Glen Allen and Kitty Hawk. Uh, but this is, uh, this is my first time to duck. And when I saw on your website that you had a tech team, I was really juiced until I found out it wasn't uh, a Virginia tech team. 
But still, we're going to come back to Doug. Pastor John and I had an interesting conversation uh, a few weeks back, and actually, it was a bit startling. I had written to him as a member of the board of directors of the Mission of Hope, Rota Funk Hospital uh, in Sierra Leone in West Africa, to thank him for the generous contribution made to our medical ministry at Rota Funk Hospital. Rota Funk Hospital is one of the North Carolina Conference's advanced specials. And as an organization, uh, we were most grateful to receive a gift of $1,000 in 2017 from Duck UMC. And now we've also received another $1,000. And what I want to do is um, make sure you know that you are appreciated by people you will never see in West Africa. Well, after I'd sent the message, Pastor John called me on back almost immediately after I wrote him, and he said that in his 30-plus years of, of pastoring, no one had ever thanked him for a contribution to a North Carolina advanced special. So I told him that drought ended that day, and as indeed we were grateful and pleased of Duck's commitment to mission ministries of all kinds, but, but particularly to Rotofunk Hospital. Again, thank you, Duck United Methodist Church. So one of my purposes today is to, to thank you for what you've done as a, to a United Methodist medical facility in a remote area of West Africa. That was once one of the best hospitals in all of West Africa, not just Sierra Leone. But we're not there yet. You can see from the video that there are immense challenges in trying to operate in a country with such bad statistics. The New York Times recently had an article, and I can't remember exactly what the title was, but it was something like, the world's worst place to have a baby, Sierra Leone. Now, this is not too nice a topic on Mother's Day, but it can't be helped. If there's one thing we all have in common is, is that we all have a mother. And mothers of all species, nearly all species, that God has placed on earth have a deep God-given love of their offspring. Mothers love their children, as was stated in today's scripture from 1 John. Whoever loves someone who is a parent loves the child born to the parent. But the specter of disease, malnutrition, non-existent or limited prenatal care, lack of midwives and doctors, poorly equipped or non-existent clinics and hospitals have taken their toll on Sierra Leone mothers. As you know by now, Nancy and I served as United Methodist missionaries in Sierra Leone. Getting used to a new culture like you might encounter in a place like Sierra Leone or, or North Carolina or, or Alabama, or Puerto Rico, can be a perilous undertaking. I'm thinking about writing a book of all the faux pas I've ever made because it seems to be my specialty. And probably the worst thing that happened to me was because I just didn't know the culture. You see, one of Bishop John Yamasu's staff members in Sierra Leone, Fenda Kiwa, had a baby. And when she returned to, her, to, to work, I asked the usual and customary uh, questions that any American would ask. Things like, uh, when was he born? How long was he? And how much did he weigh? And then I asked this question, the question that you would probably ask as well. What's his name? Fenda's eyes squinted noticeably and she responded with a most unusual answer to my question she said i don't know i didn't know what to do with that uh, and i think i mumbled something uh, probably stuttered a little bit and uh, i retreated you see the death of babies is so common in sierra leone that babies are not named for some time after they're born because the threat of death is real and constant, and you don't want to name a child who has the prospect of dying. Thousands of mothers in Sierra Leone face the trauma 
that their child won't survive the first five years of their life. Well, eventually, there was a big social event at Finda's house called, you ready for this? A naming ceremony, where the child was given a a proper tribal name and family name, and there was a great celebration. And as special guest, Nancy and I got to hold him. The government of Sierra Leone has a stated uh, commitment to better health care for their people. But at $224 per person, it's really hard to see how improvements are going to be there. In this country that has no stoplights, no big supermarkets, no sewage treatment plants, no credit cards, no 4G cell phone service, no fast food restaurants, and no Oreo cookies, you wonder about the future with so many issues. And with the recent change of government in Sierra Leone, there's an opportunity for heightened expectations, renewed hope, and sadly, probably a renewed opportunity for continued corruption, at least in my humble opinion. But hope is not in government. Hope is in Jesus Christ. As we read in our first scripture from from John, Jesus said, I have said these things to you so that my joy will be in you and your joy will be complete. This is my commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you. And here is where hope has a foothold in Sierra Leone. It's in the United Methodist Church. The United Methodist Church is a connectional church. All of our churches across the world are united with a common set of guidelines and principles And most importantly, a common belief that the mission of the church is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. I think it's on the front of your bulletin. Our church in Sierra Leone, where we worshiped, Charles Davies United Methodist Church, is connected to Duck UMC and to our home church in Richmond at Lakeside. It's who we are as a United Methodist Church, being connectional. And it makes the United Methodist Church distinctly different from other denominations. And the United Methodists in Sierra Leone love their neighbors too. And that's why the church there is far different from the church here in the U.S. You see, the Sierra Leone Annual Conference of the United Methodist Church is doing something that John Wesley would be infinitely proud of. They're meeting meeting the needs of the people in the two most critical areas of concern in the country, in education and in health care. United Methodist Church operates 350 primary and secondary schools throughout the country. That's a lot of schools especially when you understand that there's only 250 churches, United Methodist churches there. Our schools are all over the country. It's said that wherever the road ends in Sierra Leone, at the end of that road, there will be a United Methodist school. And every one of the students in those schools will have on a blue uniform. And every one of the students will be taught with an emphasis on the Bible and Jesus Christ, and on moral values that unite us in a right relationship with God. Every student in a UMC school can recite the Lord's Prayer. Every student in a UMC school will stand in an assembly in front of their school and listen to a scripture. They'll sing a hymn. They'll recite the Lord's Prayer together, and they'll sing the national anthem. What's surprising about all this is that half those students are going to be Muslims. It's said that of the educated people in Sierra Leone, one-third have been educated in UMC schools. And when Muslims and Christians gather together, everyone will say the Muslim's prayer, Muslim prayers, followed by everyone saying the Lord's Prayer. Now, when Nancy and I were doing our background due diligence on Sierra Leone, and finding out that the country is 60% Muslim, we were quietly concerned. It it wasn't exactly fear, but it was a concern. 
turned out to be a ridiculous thought. Muslims and Christians in Sierra Leone get along just fine, thank you, and have set an example for the rest of the world to emulate. A small, multi-religion country like Sierra Leone demonstrates for the rest of the world what it can be like for Christians and Muslims to get along. Perhaps the rest of the world should, should, should uh, sit up and take notice of Sierra Leone's leadership in respecting people of differing religious backgrounds. And if the rest of the world did that, would there still be Boko Haram, Al Shabaab, and Al Qaeda? Muslims, strangely enough, have played a key role in the United Methodist Church in Sierra Leone. Of the 12 district superintendents, three of them were formerly Muslims, Muslims, and two of them are named Muhammad. I'm proud of the way UMC has taken a prominent role in that country. The church's leadership in education in the country is matched by its leadership in health care. The government has been unable, or perhaps unwilling, to devote resources to the well-being of its people on a scale that's commensurate with the extreme need. Here again, our Wesleyan heritage of aggressively addressing social justice issues has played a key role for the people of Sierra Leone. UMC operates four hospitals and eight clinics around the country. Nancy and I lived through a frightening example of the inability or the unwillingness to firmly address critical health care issues as we saw with the outbreak of Ebola. Five years ago, Ebola first came in, became evident in a remote area of Sierra Leone, an area that Nancy visited right at the time of the outbreak in March. Week by week, month by month, the horrors of the Ebola crisis marched across the, the country with devastating effects on families and even whole villages. In July, four months after the outbreak, one group decided to act, the Sierra Leone Interfaith Council, made up of all religious groups in the country and led by the United Methodist Church. And they took firm action to address the issue of communicating what you must and must not do to protect yourself from Ebola. The campaign was intense. It was widespread with billboard illustrations and drawings and radio announcements and church announcements. The sad part is the government was nowhere to be seen. In fact, Although the first Ebola cases were in March, the president of the country never addressed the issue until August of that year. Six weeks after the religious leaders of the country, led by the UMC, set on a course of action to do something about the Ebola crisis. You will not see this in the newspapers. It's for reasons like this that the UMC in Sierra Leone has taken such radical air actions in the areas of health care and education. Where in the U.S. do you see United Methodist elementary schools or secondary schools? Where in the U.S. do you see clinics and hospitals run exclusively by the United Methodist Church? Yet in spite of huge obstacles, constant frustration, critical shortages, the United Methodist Church continues nearly three centuries of being the hands and feet and mind to mitigate human suffering. Are we there yet? By no means. But the one thing that you can take away from this gathering today is that you can be proud of the United Methodist Church. You can be proud that Duck UMC is connected to my church in Richmond, with the church in Rwanda, in Zimbabwe, and with the church in Sierra Leone. It is not a small thing to be a connectional church, and it is the connectional aspect of our church that sets it apart from all other denominations. The hospital we've been talking about in Rotofunk 
has a long and sad history, some of which you saw in the video clip today. There's just no way to enumerate the challenges given to me and my small staff to put the hospital back in working order after a long period of minimal support to the community in Moyamba. And just when things are back on track and some sense of normalcy occurs, the doctor's quarters burns down this year. It's, it's another obstacle, another challenge, and another solemn faith walk with the Holy Spirit to continue to do the work of the Mission of Hope, Rotofunk Hospital. And to be sure, the contributions of Duck UMC to support that work is very much appreciated. That's my message to you. The hospital at Rotofunk may be on its way to once more be in the hospital that's needed so badly to the people of Sierra Leone. Are we there yet? By no means. But we would all do well to remember the words that John Wesley, the founder of our denomination, said about what we need to do to be in God's service to others. He said, do all the good you can in all the ways you can to all the souls you can, in every place you can, at all the times you can, with all the zeal you can, as long as ever you can. May it be so. Amen. Let's all stand together and join in song. You're never gonna 